Say, say hi guys. Hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> so this, this, is, this is another one of these uh, nerdy bus expeditions today. So we have Ed, Carl, Ken, Michael and Luca, which you have seen in the other videos. And we are all going to trek over the mountain to a museum of switching, telephone switching equipment. JKL Museum it's called. So we'll see what that does. Hello folks, one of our viewers graciously invited us to visit this museum of telephony which we had no idea even existed. And we took a break from our often frantic restoration sessions, opting instead for a relaxing California nerd expedition, including a nice lunch with a view on the Pacific Ocean. There's a pot of gold at the end of the road. This is the correct way to have a telephone museum telephone booth entrance. And we were soon greeted by Remco Entoven, the curator of the JKL Telephony Museum. This is a very private collection, uh, visitable only by invitation. It actually is the second incarnation of the museum, as we understand, as the first version tragically burned down to the ground. And right off the bat, I was impressed to see some nice antique phone testing equipment. This is a Leeds and Northrop Western Bridge integrated into this to measure the resistance of the lines and find shorts. A double door wooden telephone booth. A 1903 telephone pole. And that magnificent telephone is a Stroger phone. That, that's quite expensive, actually. And that, that was my favorite in 1969 video phone. Model 2. It used uh, three pairs of wire. They reduced the bandwidth that they needed to about one megahertz by making the, scr the screen uh, square. Oh, I see. But we had not seen anything yet. That was just the entrance hall. So that's the real museum behind us. Nice antique telephone doors. And there are phones upon phones upon phones, all organized by uh, you know, approximate date, shape, color, function. And it goes on and on and on. So here are all the green ones. I like that display. And it's absolutely superbly displayed. Look at this. So we'll give you a little tour here in a second. So the collection starts with the pre-telephone days with the telegraph equipment, those nice uh, copper clad machines, it, you know, some telegraph paddles or Morse paddles. And then it evolves into the beginning of the voice telephone with uh, some replica of the Graham Bell inventions. Bell, of course, uh, uh, Bell spoke the, the famous words, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you, when he uh, allegedly spilled some acid. And that's the first... L liquid, sample. because it has liquid in it? Yeah, it has a little cup here that has mi a mild acid in it. So. And there's a wire dipping in it, or a yeah, vibration? Yeah. Like a needle huh. that is connected to the, di the, the, the diaphragm mm -hmm. that yeah, is well, in here. Sorry. Oh. And then it launches into a, a collection of the early wooden phones of all size and shapes. Look at that. And you know, these ones with the many uh, bells on them, uh, they were meant to be at small hotels and you know, every room would ring with a different ring. Uh, the so-called silver dollar pay station and uh, if you wanted to make a call you would uh, of course go off hook and uh, ring the operator and then uh, tell her which number you wanted and she would say well hang up and we'll call you back when you when we have your party on the line and then she would ring this phone back and uh, tell you to deposit an X amount of money and these are silver dollars. In today's money, this is about $28. So this was 
a lot of money for the, in, the, in, the, in those days. And of course, the operator would know by the sound of each coin, this is the dime, for instance, and the, the nickel, and the quarter, and the half dollar, and save the best for last, of course, the silver dollar, which makes a lot of noise. And then, of course, I have people asking me, well, but when I put my quarter just in the dollar slot, then I can just fool her, right? Not. Ah. It's and then from there you transition to the magnificent candlestick phones. And no, you can never have enough of those. They are spectacular. And then it's like a zoo, but for telephones. So you have every species of telephone. And their relatives and different colors and <laughs> just very nice. There is so much variety in a simple thing. This is a phone from Oslo, Norway, and I don't know if you see anything different on the dial here. Uh, let me get closer. And it has numbers, so that seems okay. Yeah, but there's something different. Oh, the numbers are done reverse. Yes. Because the uh, Norway people count the other way around. Uh, well, <laughs> the <nine's> compliment. <laughs> when you move this dial, both the number wheel and the uh, finger wheel move. The whole, the whole thing. The whole and thing the numbers. When you look at wow. the at the thickness or the lack of it uh, how this how thin like this dial is modern led tv it's like collecting butterflies they're not two the same <laughs> So. So, and if you want to dial a different number, you, you can a different thing. Uh, let's play you want to get here. Again. Cool. Speaker phone demonstration. So you said that was the first one from Western the Electric? The, the first Western Electric uh, speaker phone, the, the 1A speaker phone. And uh, you dialed the number. Hello, hello. Hello, Mark. <laughs> Welcome to the phone museum. Thank you. The pay phones, of course. There was also a display of the telephone cables. Here you see cuts through coax cables, so that's for later systems, I guess, with carrier on coax, long distance stuff. And uh, even a, a fiber optics, that's my stuff. And that is maybe under sea or something reinforced. But the thing is, is that most of these phones are actually hooked up uh, through a switch. Yeah. Right. This one over there. Okay, can you show that again? That the, the phone is actually connected and show the big cables. And yes. Yeah, we. I can hear them ticking in the back. Ticking, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, so these these cables are uh, one one end is on this side, and it goes underneath the floor uh, through a conduit, and then uh, it's laced all the way to these backboards over there. And it goes back to the switch room. 
Yeah. Over here. <laughs> Over there. So Ed has found <coughs> the best location in the museum. And enter an entire electromechanical switching operation. Woohoo! Not only do they have the phones, but they have a, a working pulse phone switching operation, electromechanical. And electromechanical contraptions for the generating of the ringing tones and you know, the busy tones. If you dial a level that does not exist, then you have 120 IPMs in a minute. And then uh, they have continuous ringing generator from the ringing plant going into different uh, springs to give you the ring. And it was for the automated. Uh, long distance system could identify oh, the sure. disconnected number. Time two twenty nine. These are the is this is the drum for the advertising. And this is the the hours and the minutes. Mm. Time two twenty nine. You can see it set place here, time two twenty nine. Mm. Blue Dog will be happy to help you open an account at First Citizens National. Time two twenty nine. And always my favorites, the pictures phones. A little ahead of the time. This is John and he's the owner and inspiration for the museum and you could call it the inspiration. Right. And also you write the checks, I guess. There, yeah. <laughs> That's an important function. And I, I just asked him a second ago, but why? Which is the same question I asked myself about my own collection. For fun and to preserve history or to pre preserve history and have fun. Right. And uh, you no know, mine's also the admiration of engineering and, and in ingenuity that went into to those those system right it's a, it's a, it's a magical system right. and then i was told you you work in the telephone industry and you had your own phone company also so that's all it's both your work and your avocation and your and your hobby at the same time yes So there was a, a museum before that was, and was it even larger than this one? It was about the same size. The same size. Uh, yeah. And then it, one fateful day, not too long ago, it burned down. In, uh, in 2015, September of 2015, wow. it burned down. And this is a phone that was on the outside of the museum, and it's this green phone here. And you can still make out the words Western Electric, and it has like nails a piece of glass and charred wood and a drywall from the uh, from the building and uh, this this used to be an aluminum phone and uh, okay, so it got really hot in there yeah I think, but that, that was your uh, the first version of the museum yes the one that burned it's a approximately 8,000 square foot building and then uh, Remco told me that those pictures were taken just a a few days yes. before the, the the fire happened. Yes. So that was also superbly beautiful looking. You don't do things halfway, do you? No. <laughs> and let's see if we can see. I have a reflection on that one. That was beautiful. And importantly, what was left at the bottom. And that's a few days later. That was the well. That was the day after the fire. Anything that was wood was gone. Mm. We even had a 19 seat theater. Well, and then, well, I, I see you have rebounded quite a bit from there. It's impressive to see so, such tenacity. We had fun building the first one, which took 19 years. And unfortunately, the electric utility burned it to the ground. And uh, we, like I say, we spent 19 years on that and we're 
about three years into getting this one going and and uh, we had 4,000 display items in the old museum and we're probably up to uh, 1,200 or 1,500 display items now and we have working mechanical central offices and things are starting to come together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's remarkable what you have done. Uh, so this is not qu quite open to the public? No, yeah. not open to the public. Uh -huh. It's by invitation. Uh -huh. uh, people call and ask if they can have an invitation to come. So this is your very private and beautiful museum. Yes, but it's there to share. I'm glad uh, you shared it with me today. I'm very <laughs> impressed. Thanks very much, John. Okay. I can get a, such a cute screen. Industrial design of it. <laughs>